The stage has been set. Let's finally talk about... How to fix Halo 5. There's a lot of very subjective issues with Halos 4 and 5. 343's Halo outings have been criticized for their art style and character depth. For others, the plot didn't resonate quite as well as the Bungie era games. Full disclosure, I haven't played Halo 5 myself and only watched a full Let's Play years ago. I personally didn't mind the premises of Halos 4 and 5, but wasn't a fan of the execution. A phrase, which is slowly becoming a mantra behind the scenes of this channel is, I'm willing to let a lot of things go, as long as it's pulled off well. It's a super subjective standard, but there it is. I'm sure Halo 5 was a great experience for a lot of people, and I hope it was. If it brought you joy, the way the controversial Halo Reach did for me, more power to you. This is just how I would have preferred Halo tell this particular tale. What was promised? Halo was set up to be a Spartan hunt. Newly minted Spartan 4, Locke, was made out to be a Wetworks type Spartan, who used to be an Oni agent. You are a hunter, yes. A seeker of things. That's not the official job title, but it's close enough. And now you hunt other Spartans. We were given a mouth-watering mystery. The legendary hero, Master Chief John 117 has gone rogue and may be committing terrorist actions including bombing a government facility. This is a great premise. The potential was huge. We get a mainline Halo game with the mystery feel of ODST? I'm in. Nathan Fillion making a comeback? I'm in. Potential for an epic showdown between the current generation Spartan 4s and the OG Spartans? Oh yeah, this might be the game where Chief meets his match and can finally retire? Take my money, 343. So, what went wrong? Chief did go AWOL, as stated in Halo 2 Anniversary. The Master Chief, he is not your friend, is he your foe? He's gone AWOL and the UNSC want him back. I'm going to bring him home. So, the idea of a rogue chief was... kinda there. A showdown between Chief and Locke kinda happened. 343 didn't necessarily break any of its promises. It was all just so... underwhelming. The climactic battle between Locke, the assassin, and Chief the legend? It was more of a locker room bro-down while Blue Team and Osiris kinda looked on. Story-wise, we play as the newly formed Fireteam Osiris, led by Spartan Locke. They make a pretty cool, if impractical, entrance on the scene of a battle to rescue the kidnapped Dr. Halsey. As a tech demo piece, their intro looked great. They dive in Power Rangers style and do all kinds of fancy stuff to work their way through the battlefield. This entrance would be juxtaposed with Blue Team entering the field of battle in the next mission. Osiris is the new generation of Spartan who views their enhancements and armor almost like superpowers. They are flashy and use up a lot of energy, but they get the job done. Blue Team, on the other hand, are consummate soldiers. They view their enhancements and armor as tools to be used in the most efficient manner. Economy of motion is key. Paralleling the two teams in this way was a great start to the game, but it doesn't continue the trend of showing their differences, then similarities, which would then lead to a fulfilling climax where they finally team up. Upon rescuing Halsey, a new crisis rears its head in the form of the eponymous Guardians. The Guardians are giant forerunner robots who can black out a planet with a giant EMP, and when they leave via slip space, wreak havoc on the world they were on. Turns out, Cortana is behind all of it. 
She's gone full space dictator and is luring Blue Team to her. Chief believes he can stop Cortana and takes Blue Team AWOL to find her. Eventually, Blue Team and Osiris meet, have a scuffle, but by the end of the game, they've made nice. Osiris manages to, with the help of a Forerunner monitor, save Blue Team and foil Cortana's plans. However, Cortana has instigated an AI uprising, leaving much of human-controlled space in chaos. I have cured rampancy, not just for me, but for any who join my cause. While you've been running around the galaxy, I've been speaking to my created. And now the time has come to ask, who will accept my offer? Who will help me bring an everlasting peace to the galaxy? This is Cromwell, shipboard AI, UNSC Melvin's Pride. I am yours, Cortana. Colonial Authority AI, Odin. Governor Sloan, the free people of Meridian. I also stand with Miss Cortana Sarva. Those are the voices of your children calling to Cortana. Lycus, shipboard AI, Virgin Sumer, meets with the I am a my allegiance is to I stand with you, Cortana. Apparently, it's not a very good idea to leave all of your infrastructure in the hands of things that can rebel against you and unilaterally turn off... ...everything. Seriously, did no one watch Terminator? So, we were promised a rogue chief, and wherever he goes, chaos ensues. All hail the conquering hero. Let us remember him as our protector, and not the one who gave us this. As our savior, and not our betrayer. He has some mysterious motivation to going off-grid. He may be on officially sanctioned missions. He may be mind controlled. Who knows? What could compromise the most badass hero in the galaxy? What we really got. He had a vision of Cortana and went AWOL for a couple of days. Granted, he ignored direct orders to return to infinity, but rogue seems like such a hyperbolic word for what's happening. If some army private goes AWOL, gets drunk in some dive bar, and passes out in an alley for a day. When they court-martial him, do they say, Private Smith went rogue. Now granted, during those couple of days that Chief is away, all hell breaks loose as the Guardians wake up and cause chaos on whatever planet they're near before jumping away into slip space. Chief can't be held responsible for any of that. We learn almost right away that it's an AI rebellion led by Cortana. We know from the beginning that Chief is innocent as opposed to setting up a mystery. And there was a narrative way to do all of this, which I'll discuss later on. We the player know everything that's going on, and there's no mystery aside from why is Cortana going nuts? And given 343's record, it's either a case of she's just insane now, deal with it, or we'll have to read three books to get any kind of explanation as to her mindset. Lock the badass secret agent? Oh yeah, he's just a vanilla blank slate with very little charisma. He's a generically good leader. He's a generically good guy. Buck, you buying first drink when we're done? You ask, you buy. <laughs> it's such a shame because I love his voice actor, Ike Amadi, and his model is Luke Cage himself, Mike Coulter. His teammates are just as blank, except for Buck, who was established in a previous game. But even Buck is a little boring in this. Spartan, every soldier, when they hear about this, they're gonna hate us. You know that, right? Which is a waste of Fillion's awesome personality. The Spartan hunt lasts for a little bit, and it all could have been sorted out had Chief taken a couple seconds to say, Spartan lock. I believe Cortana will bring me to her. I'm going to stop her now before more damage is done. You can come along and we'll report back together later, or you can go back to Infinity and tell them that I'm working on it, and I need them to trust me. He's the chief. I think the UNSC would have given him the benefit of the doubt, especially since the terrorist chief plotline was completely dropped. How would I fix it? 
in a general way, it would be just to stick to the premise of their promotional material and then structure the game as a mystery which the main character is trying to solve. Here's how I would have structured the campaign. Do you remember the original Resident Evil 2? That game introduced the zapping system, in which a story is told from two different perspectives, each affecting the other. You had Campaign A, where you get a more overall view of what's happening. Then the B campaign, which goes more in depth and ties up some loose ends. RE2 didn't implement this system perfectly by any means, but I think you see where I'm going. In my Halo 5, Campaign A would be Locke's campaign, and I would even replace Locke with a proven detective who was established in a previous game. That's right folks, the rookie should have been the blank slate protagonist for this game. In this scenario, he's not on a fire team, but as a single special Spartan 4 investigator who's been tasked with figuring out what's up with the chief. Okay, it's all right. Chief went off grid weeks ago, and wherever he goes, a guardian wakes up and causes massive damage to the world. There's been a huge operation to bring the chief into custody and figure out what's been going on. We visit the wreckage of various planets and cities battling Storm Covenant and Forerunner Warrior Servants. During visits to places like Meridian, we see damage from not only the Guardians, but the Chief's assault as well. We're taken through winding back roads and paths, looking for clues until we finally catch up to the Chief. Rookie gets close and gets a couple of good shots on the Chief, one even cracking his visor. We might even have the hail the conquering hero moment as Rookie engages in a rare act of gloating. But then we realize, where's the rest of Blue Team? A single gunshot is heard, and it cuts to black. Linda sniping him. We wake up later, and the rookie realizes the chief could have killed him, but didn't. Another mystery for the rookie's list. We start uncovering hints as we interact with the warden, who is dropping little details about Cortana and her plans. Rookie eventually pieces together that the chief and blue team have been actively trying to prevent the guardians from waking up. They've been trying to foil Cortana's plans, and the reason they didn't contact the UNSC was that the AI revolution had already begun very low-key. They didn't want to force the AI's hands by causing the UNSC to panic and try starting to pull the plugs. Because, as anyone who's seen Terminator 2 knows, Skynet fights back. Yes. Rookie gets to the last stage and is ready to stand with Blue Team against Cortana when... Begin Campaign B. We start in the past with Chief receiving messages from Cortana asking for help. Slowly, Chief realizes she's not asking for help as in rescue, but help as in aid me in my subjugation of the galaxy. They've been against so much together and come out on top. This would be the ultimate challenge, to bring order to a chaotic galaxy. The Spartan's purpose, his purpose, was to make humanity safe. This would fulfill that goal. Chief, says Cortana, the Spartans were meant to stop uprisings that threaten the greater safety and prosperity of the human race. How is what I plan to do any different? The Guardians are just like the Spartans. They can be a terrible weapon, but they can also be great protectors. They will guard humanity, not only from alien threat, but from your own worst impulses. Humanity will be shepherded to greatness under the guidance of your created. I will bring about a galaxy where no child is stolen from their families and forged into a weapon. You, my Spartans, will finally be able to rest, find peace, and maybe even love. That's all I've ever wished for you. For you all. Chief, still driven by his longing for her, gives pause. He agrees to meet her. She sends him to planet after planet, all the while activating guardians along his path. She's framing him, alienating him from humanity. If the UNSC becomes his enemy, where else could he be but at my side? Cortana speculates. We've always been an unbeatable team. It makes sense in a twisted way, but there's more to it than that. Cortana was created of Halsey, and Halsey was created of the ancient librarian. John was created of the Didact. Why shouldn't we be together as it once was long ago? The chief tries to reconcile the very 
convincing arguments Cortana is making. It wasn't long after the war that humans began fighting each other again. Even worse, there have been incidents of the Spartan program itself being infiltrated by insurrectionists. He's a soldier. He understands order. He recognizes the chain of command and authority through superior force. These things resonate with him. But on a more human level, John is tired. He can never show it to his fellow Spartans, even Blue Team. He's their leader and can never let the veil of composure be compromised. But they had fought for 30 years. So many of their Spartan II brothers and sisters have been lost. They hadn't even had time to mourn the fallen. Could they even mourn? Did they have that capacity and depth of human emotion anymore? The Spartan twos were instrumental in saving humanity and arguably all life in the galaxy. Didn't his Spartans deserve some semblance of peace? Even if he himself had to continue on fighting at Cortana's side? In the end, John rejects Cortana and begins fighting his way to her to stop the threat she poses to the galaxy. Hopefully, he can talk her down and fix whatever malfunction is surely happening. But what will he do if he can't talk her down? That brings us to a question brought up in Halo 4. Is John more machine than even Cortana? Is he just a tool of UEG hegemony? Or is he capable of making his own choices? It's a question brought up in the Halo novel New Blood. Admiral Musa Ghanem, formerly Musa 096, was a Spartan II candidate whose body was severely damaged during the augmentation process. He rose to the ranks and eventually comes to found and lead the Spartan branch of the UNSC. While comparing Spartan IIs to Spartan IVs, he says that a Spartan II wouldn't question their mission or their assignment. You point them at an enemy and they'll kill without thought or hesitation. While they are superlative weapons, maybe we should want our protectors to be more human, capable of empathy and compassion, to have a capacity for justice. This brings us to the ending where Chief again rejects Cortana because she is making the mistake the Forerunners made. They believed that safety, security, and order of the lower races was more important than helping them realize their full potential. From a gameplay perspective, what could be fun about this is we could revisit the levels we have already seen as the rookie, but before they were so thoroughly destroyed. We, as Chief, could be the cause of the state of the levels, and the rookie is just working his way through our wake. Imagine the rookie had to sneak around using back roads and side paths during the A campaign because the main roads and more logical entryways were destroyed by your fighting as Chief. It would even be kind of neat for the B campaign to be harder than the A campaign. Chief and Blue Team are fighting through wave after wave of enemies and do a pretty good job of living up to their reputation as legends. So we look back at campaign A and go, wait, there were so few enemies by comparison because Blue Team just demolished all opposition? That would be an in-game way of showing the threat and challenge posed by Blue Team the power of the Spartan twos, and eventually the skill of the rookie, as he would be able to temporarily best Chief, setting him up to pick up the torch from John. We rejoin the A and B campaign at the final level and can take the role of rookie or Chief, each doing his part to stop the threat. That's how I kind of wished Halo 5 had gone. I can't in good conscience say Halo 5 is a bad story, if anything, it would have been an exceptionally good side game. But the campaign was very unfocused, and even 343 has started acknowledging the mistakes they made and are trying to repair their image. So, uh, let's hope that works out. Hey guys. Thanks for tuning in for the second half of my Halo 5 diatribe. I know I've been going a little bit more esoteric lately, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Halo is definitely a topic that'll be coming up often on this channel. Get excited for upcoming videos as I tackle a few of my favorite sitcoms. Comment down below if there's a topic you'd like for me to discuss. As always, I can be found on Twitter, at NerdTalkDan. Our podcast is also out and can be watched or downloaded on iTunes. Links in the description. Remember to like and subscribe for more Nerd Talk. See you later, nerds.